together. Good day everyone, I am Joy Elamidi Banyaga. In this video, I'm going to discuss to you the historical foundation of education. According to Dr. Selin Yeldes, when you see historical foundation of education, it pertains to the ideas from the past that is now the concrete support for educational today. First is the primitive education. Life of the primitive or tribal people was very simple compared to the life that people have today. Their means of livelihood were hunting and gathering of fruits and vegetables. The organization was tribal and was hidden by the oldest and wisest among the members. In the primitive culture, there was no reading and writing, and the information was transmitted through word of mouth, songs, gestures, ceremonial rites, and the like. The aims of primitive education first the security and survival from dangers that can be inflicted by the following natural phenomena, wild and poisonous animals, evil spirits, hunger from scarcity of food, and the other tribes which are very hostile to them. Second is the conformity, and the third is the preservation and transmission of traditions because they want to preserve it and transmit it to the incoming generation. Type of education in primitive education is first the vocational, like hunting and constructing a hat. Second, religious or animistic, which means learning how to participate in ritualistic practices to please or appease the unseen spirit. The contents of these studies are ways of procuring the basic necessities in life and of protecting life from dangers. Second, the superstitions, which is how to worship before the dwelling of the ancient spirit, such as a big tree, a big rock, a river, and a big bush. The agencies of primitive education, first is the home, which is always the center of learning, especially for the young. Second is the environment. In organization of grades, there was none in primitive education. There was no graduation in instruction. Neither there were their organized classes. Method of instruction during primitive education. First, all instruction was done informally. Second, the observation and the imitation from the parents. Third, simple telling and demonstration. This is the lecture demonstrations nowadays. And the fourth, participation. The children participated in the work of their parents and they learned. There was no financing involved since there was no teacher to pay, no materials to buy, no school to construct because education was strictly informal. The outstanding contribution of primitive education is that the primitive man started the rudiments of education from which involved the modern educational system of today. Second is the Sumerian education. Sumerian education were commercial people. Their king, called Patisi, was their temporal as well as spiritual leader. Their system of writing was uniform. The aims of Sumerian education is first the training of scribes, which trained to do ecclesiastical work in temples mostly writing. Second, training of bookkeepers, which record to their multifarious business transactions. Third is the training for teachers. And the fourth is the training the learners to be good and to do good things, especially to their God and to the humanity called Nam Lulu. The types of Sumerian educations are writing education, mathematical education, language education, vocational education, professional education, and the art education. The content of these studies are reading, writing, Little arithmetic, astronomy for conducting the planting and reaping season, astrology, medicine and surgery, architecture, agriculture, and hydraulics, jewelry designing in gold, copper, and silver, sculpture, literary art, vocational training includes carpentry, shipbuilding, smithing, and in law, 
some simple rules and regulations to be obeyed. The agencies of Sumerian education are home, school, which is consisted of six rooms, and the walls is eight to feet high, temple school, and the apprentice school. In organization of grades, there were already organized classes as far back as 3000 BC. There was higher education for the professions and for those who can afford it. And the education was not universal. Methods of instruction during Sumerian education are imitations and copying what the teacher had written and followed by minimal explanation. And second, preparation of tablets, which is the main works of the learners that dealt with their lessons. In financing, it was not clear whether the student paid tuition fees or not, but probably the students paid certain amounts of fees, thus preventing the less privileged from continuing higher education. So Marian's outstanding contribution to education, and especially to the civilization, was its uniform writing. The third is the early Egyptian education. In early Egyptian education, the government was autocratic ruled by the king called Pharaoh. Egyptians were polytheistic. They worshipped the sun god, Ra or Amun-Ra, and Osiris who judged the dead. Horus, god of the day, and Seth, their Satan. They were firm believers in life after death, that's why they built many temples. The aims of early Egyptian education is first, the training of scribes, Second, the religious, which inculcate proper respect for the gods and the pharaoh. Third, is the utilitarian, which is the father and the mother wanted to transfer their skills in his occupation and her skills in keeping house. And the fourth is the preservation of cultural patterns. The types of early Egyptian education is first the religious education, which is to inculcate in the minds of the learners proper respect for the gods moral conduct and preparation of life after death. Second, the vocational and professional education, which is they wanted to perpetuate the artistic skills that embellish their temples. Third is the military education, which is only for the sons of the nobles. And the fourth is the education for public administration, for those who aspire for positions in that government. Fifth is the priesthood education, it is for those who aspire to become priests. And the sixth is the home arts education. It is a vocational and offered for the women. And the last is writing, reading, and language education. The Egyptians used hieroglyphics form of writing. The content to be studied in early Egyptians are reading, writing and language, religious and secular literature, the study of aphorisms, proverbs, and moral judgments, artistry and metal and lapidary, mathematics, especially geometry and surveying, astronomy, engineering, architecture, physics, medicine, embalming, dentistry, and law. Music, dancing, playing the harp, cymbals, drum, lyre, guitar, tambourine, and clapping to rhythm. The sports, games, and physical education with swimming, wrestling, archery, and hunting and fishing. The military schools offered training in the use of the bow and arrow, battle axe, lance, mace, and shield. The agencies of education in early Egyptian education is first the home, second, temple schools. It is for the higher education, especially for engineering, architecture, medicine, dentistry, and surveying. The military schools it is only for the sons of the nobles for defense and aggression. Fourth is the court school. It is for those aspiring for a public office and those taking up law. And the last is the vocational school. It is schools of arts and trades. And in organization of grades, the young study at home. And their teacher is their mother. And at the age of five, the boys attended the reading and writing schools if the parents could afford to pay the school fees. And at the age of 17, the boys entered the schools that offered their vocation. 
The methods of instructions are first the apprenticeship, the dominant method in the lower and vocational schools. Second, dictation, memorization, copying, imitation, and repetition. These are standard practices in teaching, especially in the lower grades. And the last is observation and participation. And the flagging was used to penalize the failure to learn. In financing, the pupils and the students had to pay a certain amount of school fees even in the lower schools. Hence, the education was not universal. The outstanding contribution in the early Egyptian education were probably geometrical measurement and surveying because they were the first to use these two mathematical techniques. Fourth is the early Hindu education. In early Hindu education, there were humid climates, hard life, poverty, disease, and famine developed in the people, a kind of religion characterized by mysticism and fatalism. Karma made people believe that there was a reward for good deeds and a punishment for evil ones. The chief religion was Brahmanism, which is also called Hinduism. The aims of early Hindu education is first the intellectual. It is for excellent development through knowledge and contemplation of philosophical truth. Second is the religious. It is to prepare for the future life and seek perfection. Third is the cultural. It is to preserve the caste system through the use of precedent, history, and strict observation of the customs and tradition. The types in early Hindu education is first the religious education. It is the development of spiritual and emotional attitudes rather than with the acquisition of new knowledge. Second, the intellectual education. It is for the priests and teachers so that they can impart the religious tenets hymns and prayers. Third is the vocational for the artisans, agriculturists, farmers, and laborers. Fourth, domestic education. It is for the women to serve their husbands and bear children. And the last, the military education. It is for the military caste. The content to be studied in early Hindu education is first the literature for the Brahmins. Second, in college, astronomy, history, grammar, law, medicine, mathematics, contemporary arithmetical notation, including the symbols O and algebra. Third, is the dancing associated with religion. Fourth, sports such as wrestling, archery, and yoga. Fifth, linguistics, philosophy, and theology. And the last for military training, use of the horse, elephant, and chariot in war. The agencies in early Hindu education is first the home where the child was taught until the age of five. Second, outdoors, where there are less than 15 pupils and the classes were held under the large trees. Third is monasteries, which later organized for higher schooling. In the organization of grades, the child was taught at home till the age of five. And at five, the child attended higher schools. The women were only given only domestic education as their role was only housekeeping and serving their husbands and bearing children. The methods of instructions are imitation. In language, the teacher uttered the words and the pupils imitated. In writing, pupils imitated the teacher's copy, first on the sand and later on palm leaves. In vocational, for the military, the teacher had to demonstrate and the pupils imitated. Second, memorization. The Vedas, which were written mostly in verse, lent themselves to memorization and the learning was slow. In financing, it was the degrees in the part of the teacher to receive a fixed salary. The teachers were called Goros, were highly respected by the children even more than they did their parents. The teachers were remunerated by means of gifts from parents of the children. 
The amount of gifts depend upon the social economic status of child's family. Outstanding contribution of the early Hindu education is probably the decimal system of arithmetical notation, particularly the use of the symbol O. With the use of this, we can write any size of a number and we can use the four fundamental operations on whole numbers, fractions, and decimals with the utmost function. Next is the early Chinese education. The basic philosophy of early Chinese education was based on writings of Confucius and other Chinese philosophers. The writing of Confucius dealt with the accumulated wisdom of many hundred years. The end in early Chinese education is first the ideological and ethical or moral learning. It gave stress to the teaching of Confucius concerning relationships order, duty, and morality. The five fundamental relationships are between sovereign and subject, between father and the child, between husband and wife, between older brother and younger brother, and between older friend and younger one. The doctrine of submission is where subject to sovereign, son to father, wife to husband, younger brother to older brother, and younger friend to older one. The five cardinal virtues is benevolence or universal charity, justice, conformity to established usage, prudence of rectitude of heart and mind, and fidelity of your sincerity. Second, cultural development. It is to maintain the cultural patterns and usage. And the last is civil service. It is to prepare students to take the state examinations to qualify for higher status in the field for positions in the government. The types of early Chinese education is first the ideological and moral education. It is studied the Confucian relationships, doctrine of submission, and the cardinal values. Second, language education. The Chinese language has many characters that represent the an idea, and these characters had to be mastered or memorized. Third, vocational and domestic education. Trade skills to be acquired by men and domestic skills to be acquired by women. Fourth, civic education. For those who would like to serve in government. And the last is the military education for defense and aggression purposes. The content to be studied in early Chinese education is that the following books which contain maxims and doctrines of ethical and political nature had to be mustered in order to be able and hold any official positions. First, the Shu King or Book of History. Second, the Shi King or Book of Odes. Third, the Yi King or Book of Changes. Li Qi King or Book of Rights. And the last is the Xiao King or Book of Filial Piety. And the four books are the Ta Xiao or Great Learning, the Chong Yong or Doctrine of the Min, the Lon Yu or Sayings of Confucius, and the Min Qi or Sayings of Mincius. A second Chinese philosophy for living studied was Taoism or the Path of Reason attributed to the Lao Tse. The agencies in early Chinese education is first the home, is the locus of learning for the young. Second, private schools, the villages had elementary and private schools. And the third is the house of the teacher or rich people, a deserted pagoda or any place. And there, were, and there was no national system of education. In organization of grades, in elementary, the child started school at the age of 7. And the school began at sunrise and ended at about 5 in the afternoon with only one hour lunch. And the school sessions were held throughout the year. In higher education, mainly for preparation for taking the government examination. In lowest examination, the honors called so child similar to the Bachelor of Arts degree. Next examination is consisted of three sessions and each session lasted three days. Honors called Chu Gen equivalent to Master of Arts. 
and the final examination lasted 13 days and the honors called Chin Shin similar to the doctoral degree and those who failed became the teachers in the elementary school. The method of instruction in early Chinese education is first the Confucian method. The outdoor teaching was prevalent. Second, direct and exact imitation. And the last is the memorization. The whole time was devoted to memorization. The Chinese characters used in writing, the classics, and the four books and other learning materials had to be memorized thoroughly. In financing, the schools were supported by the tuition fees of the pupils. And the outstanding contribution of the early China to education is the administration of civil service examination. This has been adopted by almost all countries of the world today. Next is the early Hebrew education. The aim of early Hebrew education is first the moral. It is to develop faithful and obedient servant of God or Yahweh to assure the harmony and glorious future of God's chosen people. Second, preparation for destiny. It instructs each succeeding generation to perform its task faithfully. Third, the holiness. It is to attain the holiness before the eyes of the Lord. And the last is the observance of religion. It is to keep a stylized observance of institutionalized religion under the Torah and the Decalogue. Torah is the body of rules and regulation of religious ceremonies, social relationships, and domestic customs. And the Decalogue is the Ten Commandments. The types of education in early Hebrew education is first the religious and civic education. It was integrated. The education was spiritual and theoretic. Second, democratic education. Education is democratic and universal. It was an obligation for one to get an education. Third, domestic education. It is for the future women and wives to be trained in housekeeping and preparation of food. Fourth, vocational education. It is considered very essential. Fifth, human relation. It is how to treat relatives, strangers, and slaves with respect was taught. And the last is the physical education, which is very little provision. The content to be studied in early Hebrew education is first the history of Hebrews and God relationships to them. Second, the Jewish law or Mosaic law. Third, Psalms and Proverbs, which is very important parts in the Old Testament. Fourth, explanations of festivities, the Passover, Pentecost, Harvest Festivals, and the Tabernacles. Fifth, the music, sacred and common. It is the use of lyre and harp. The sixth is the reading and writing, and the last is the foreign language. Early Hebrew agencies of education is first is the home, where parents is responsible for the education of their children. Second, the public school for the Joshua Ben Gamala. Every town must have a school. There must be one teacher for every 25 pupils. More than 25 pupils, but less than 40 required assistant. And more than 40 pupils, two teachers. Third is the temple or synagogue where Torah and Talmud were expounded. Fourth, institution for lay prophets. It is to study the historical and sacred background of the Judaism, interpretation of the law, art of the sacred, and above all, the Jewish righteousness. And the last is the schools and colleges for scribes. It was organized in the homes of scribes given an intensive analytical the study of the Torah and the Talmud. He also studied charity, chastity, truthfulness, prudence, and temperance. The methods of instruction in early Hebrew education is first, it is compulsory that the boys were taught in the school and the girls at home. Second, oral. The spoken word was used for lack of writing materials. Third, memorization, where the pupils are required to memorize the passages and sentences learned. 
they use extensive mnemonic devices for memorizing. For the audiovisual aids. Fifth, the exposition, and the followed by questions. And the last is the temple worship. The students are free to go to the temple any day of worship, but it was compulsory for all males to visit at least three times. The school day was long. It started early in the morning and lasted into the evening with a short recess at noon. There was a vacation only when there was a festival. In financing and elementary, there were some expenses. The teachers were not paid regularly, but they have other means of livelihood and they were allowed to receive gifts from the parents of their pupils. The outstanding contribution of the early Hebrew education is first the monotheism. It is the concept of one and only God. Second, the Ten Commandments. It is the general guide to ethical conduct. And the last is the Bible. That's all and thank you for listening. Have breakfast together.